This worm trick will help you control pests naturally in your raised garden. Tired of spraying your raised garden only to have pests come back stronger? You're not alone. Many gardeners are stuck in a frustrating cycle of bugs, damage, and endless pest control efforts that don't seem to stick. But what if the solution isn't in your shed, it's already in your soil? On Soil and Crop Central, we're peeling back the layers literally to reveal one of the most underrated weapons in natural pest control worms. That's right, worms. Not just composting heroes or soil fluffers. These underground allies quietly fight off pests by transforming the very environment that allows them to thrive. Why Pests Can't Thrive in Worm-Active Soil When you think about garden pests, root maggots, gnats, cutworms, you probably imagine bugs munching through roots or flying from leaf to leaf. But most of these problems actually begin under the surface. Many common pests lay their eggs or begin their life cycle in moist, compacted, low-oxygen soil. Worms completely alter that environment. Worms aerate the soil as they move through it, breaking up tight, airless zones and improving drainage. This reduces the soggy, stagnant conditions that pests love to breed in. On top of that, worms consume dead and decaying matter, removing the exact material pests depend on to hatch, feed, and multiply. No more rot, no more gnats, no clumps of dead roots, no maggot colonies. So by simply doing what they do best, burrowing, feeding, and, well, pooping, worms break the life cycle of pests at the source. They make it incredibly hard for harmful insects to gain a foothold in your garden, and over time, you'll see fewer outbreaks and far less damage. The Surprising Power of Worm Castings Against Pest Eggs You might have heard of worm castings before, often described as black gold in the gardening world. But beyond being a powerful organic fertilizer, worm castings are also a potent pest deterrent. One reason? They contain an enzyme called kittenase. Kittenase breaks down chitin, the tough outer shell that makes up many insect eggs and larvae. When worm castings are spread through the root zone of your raised beds, they create a microenvironment that actively weakens and destroys pests before they hatch. You won't see this happening, but you'll notice it. Fewer eggs survive. Fewer larvae grow. The pest population shrinks naturally. It's a silent defense system. No spraying, no toxins, no harsh treatments. Just the chemistry of life doing its job underground. This alone is a game-changer for gardeners tired of reapplying treatments week after week. So how do worms attract the good bugs that eat the bad ones? Well, worms aren't just helping you out themselves. They're actually building a neighborhood that invites the right kind of insect tenants. The kind that don't nibble your lettuce but instead devour the pests that do. When your soil is rich in worm activity, it naturally draws in beneficial predators like ground beetles, centipedes, rove beetles, and spiders. These bugs really need a healthy habitat to survive, and that's exactly what worm tunnels and castings create. When they move in, you get a second line of defense. Aphids, larvae, and soft-bodied pests suddenly have enemies hunting them down. You don't need to buy predatory insects online or, you know, manually release them. Just build the kind of soil life they want to live in. Worms lay the groundwork and nature does the rest. There's another layer to this whole worm and pest puzzle. Healthy plants, it turns out, are just harder for pests to damage. Kind of like how a strong immune system in humans fights off viruses more easily, strong plants resist insects more effectively. Worms help make that happen in two big ways. First, their castings release nutrients in plant-available forms. That means plants can take in exactly what they need, when they need it, to grow stronger roots, thicker stems, and tougher leaves. Second, castings improve soil texture and moisture retention, which gives roots a stable environment to grow deeper and more vigorously. The result? Pest-resistant plants that bounce back faster after a nibble and don't suffer major setbacks from small attacks. And when plants are thriving, pests naturally back off. Weak plants send chemical distress signals that attract bugs. Strong plants don't. With worms working the soil, your plants are better equipped to defend themselves. What happens if you don't have worms in your raised bed? Here's a perspective shift. Instead of asking what worms do, ask what happens if they're missing. The answer is clear, and, honestly, a little alarming. Without worms, your soil becomes compacted, especially in raised beds that dry out or get waterlogged. Pockets of decaying matter build up, 
oxygen levels drop, moisture just sits around too long. All of this creates the perfect nursery for pests to lay eggs, hatch, and feed on helpless roots. Plus, the soil stays biologically poor, meaning fewer microbes and nutrients to support plant growth. The plants become stressed, and stressed plants are magnets for pests. Aphids, gnats, mites, they all zero in on weak, struggling vegetation. So you spray and the cycle just continues. No worms, more pests. Simple as that. How do you make your raised garden a worm paradise? Let's get practical. If you want worms to help you fight pests, you've got to give them a home they love. Worms aren't fans of dry, hot, compacted soil, so your raised bed needs to be a cool, moist, well-fed environment. Start with a rich soil blend made of compost, topsoil, and coconut coir or peat moss. This gives worms organic matter to eat plus moisture retention and structure for easy movement. Mulch the surface with straw or shredded leaves to keep moisture in and protect worms from heat. Keep the soil consistently damp, especially in hot weather. A dry bed is a dead zone for worms. Water deeply, rather than frequently, to encourage deep movement and growth. And feed your worms. Add chopped vegetable scraps, coffee grounds, and soft plant trimmings regularly. Just avoid citrus, meat, and anything spicy or oily. If your bed doesn't have worms yet, you can introduce them by buying red wigglers or nightcrawlers from a worm farm. They'll settle in quickly if the conditions are right. And once they do, your pest problem will quietly begin to shrink from the roots up. How do you tell if worms are winning the battle? You'll know your worms are doing their job when the signs start showing above ground. Healthier plants, fewer chew marks, and a noticeable reduction in the number of pests lurking around your beds. But, honestly, the real signs are below the surface. As you tend your garden, dig gently into the top few inches of soil. If you find worm castings, small, crumbly, dark particles, and spot worms wiggling through the soil, you're on the right path. If your soil smells earthy, stays evenly moist and feels spongy when you grab a handful, you've got a worm-rich bed. Stick with it. Worm ecosystems take time to build, but once established, they're incredibly low-maintenance and long-lasting. You'll spend less time battling pests and more time harvesting healthy, vibrant produce. Here's the truth. Worms aren't soldiers. They won't chase down beetles or bite into caterpillars. But what they will do is change your soil in a way that makes pests unwelcome. They'll improve plant strength, invite beneficial bugs, and clean up the root zone so pests have nowhere to thrive. If you've been struggling with pest control in your raised garden, maybe it's time to stop fighting and start restoring. Let worms do what they were made to do. Create balance from the ground up. At Soil and Crop Central, we believe healthy gardens don't need constant fixing. They need living systems that manage themselves. And your worm army might just be the quiet, tireless team that turns your pest-ridden plot into a thriving, resilient oasis. Give them the right soil, a steady diet, and a little time, and let nature handle the rest.